Good evening, everybody. I don't get too much time anymore to create these short videos, but I really wanted to talk a little bit about PowerShell and how evil tools like PowerShell and RegServe, but extremely necessary they can be. So PowerShell and RegServe 32 are some of the most compromised tools on the Windows operating system. They're used in various cyber attacks and even worse, fileless attacks, where they don't, an attacker doesn't even need to run software on your computer to encrypt your files or copy your data. They can just simply use tools built into your operating system. Uh, the first one of these tools is PowerShell, obviously. Um, we can't stop it. It's used by too many applications and it's too important to your system. But what we can do is ring fence it. So if you're using Threat Locker and you're not already doing this, jump into your policies on the policy page, find your PowerShell policy that permits PowerShell, and change the permit action to permit with ring fence. The next two things I want you to do is one is going to the files tab and just check this box. What this is gonna do is this is gonna stop PowerShell accessing any of your protected files. Protected files are any network shares, any external storage, or anything that you've set up an audit policy on. So if you've got audit policies on your OneDrive or your Dropbox, so your local documents folder, they're gonna be protected as well. As soon as you check this box, PowerShell is not going to be able to access it, this data. So if an attacker manages to run a PowerShell command to encrypt your files, he's only going to be able to encrypt things that aren't on network shares or aren't in your documents folder. The next checkbox I want you to check is the internet checkbox. This here is going to stop PowerShell accessing the internet. Now, this is almost the first line of defense because if an attacker manages to run a PowerShell command, quite often that command needs to get instruction from the internet or to upload your files to the internet. If it can't get the instruction to begin with, then it's very difficult to run the command. So first of all, by checking this box, you're going to say PowerShell cannot access the internet. And then you can create any exceptions you want here. And you can use wildcards, IP addresses, host names, and things like that here. Somebody opens PowerShell when it's ring fence, they're still going to be able to do all of the system administration things they need to be able to do. But if they try and go on to your documents folder and access your files, so I'll look at some files here and I'm going to say copy my test. The permission's going to be denied. If they try and encrypt your files, that's going to be denied. Likewise, if they go onto a network drive or a network share, they can't see that. They can't see any files. If we jump into the audit here, we can see that those actions were ring fenced. So I can see here that PowerShell tried to access this file and this policy ring fence. That you can also go in and add an exception to that policy if you'd like. The next part is the internet. PowerShell tries to upload data to the internet, download, a web, invoke a web request, or do anything else. It's just simply going to be denied. Those two features alone are really going to harden your operating system. Someone did point out to me that you can invoke an Internet Explorer command from PowerShell to access data on the internet and by calling Internet Explorer in a hidden window. That's true. I haven't been able to replicate actually bringing data back into PowerShell, bringing a command back into PowerShell, only to run it through Internet Explorer. And the way you can handle that is you can ring fence Internet Explorer so it can't talk to PowerShell and vice versa, ring fence PowerShell. So you can say here, I want to block interaction with Internet Explorer and just add that into the list there. So at very least though, if you don't already have it enabled, go into your policies, click on the files, find the PowerShell policy, click on the files tab and check this box to protect your files from PowerShell. Do the same to stop PowerShell accessing the internet. The other command, the other application that is really dangerous that you don't want to access the internet or access your files is RegServe. Again, a file that's used in Windows all the time. You cannot block this file from running, but I have never in my life seen a legitimate reason for this application to access any of your files or to access the internet. In many attempts, attackers have used RegServe to download a payload from the internet in directly into memory and run code without ever touching a disk, making it invisible to antivirus, making it invisible to whitelisting, if you stop RegServe from going to the internet, it has no way of getting that payload. And if you stop it from accessing your files, even if by some chance they, an attacker manages to load the payload, 
It will not be able to encrypt your files. It will not be able to copy your data. These are just the two first applications. You can also add these as suggested policies by going into here and picking our suggested policies. And you can also take these actions against any of your applications. So if you're using other applications, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, and you don't want them to be compromised and don't want them to be able to access your data, checking these boxes is going to reduce your surface area there. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at ThreatLocker. Thank you.